So I'm Peter Jenner. I'm Professor of Pharmacology at uh, King's College in London. And for several decades, I've been involved in teaching young scientists and young medical students about neurodegenerative diseases. When we look at the treatment of illnesses such as Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, what we do in current symptomatic therapy is that we base these on what we know about the major transmitter changes that take place in key brain areas in Alzheimer's disease and in Parkinson's disease. As a result of that, what we mainly do is use dopamine replacement therapy for Parkinson's disease, which works very well, and we use cholinergic therapy and glutamate antagonism for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. But the difficulty is that these symptomatic treatments, they don't have effects on all the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. For example, the non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease do not respond as a whole to dopaminergic therapy. In addition, none of these treatments have any effect on the disease process. If we're going to break out of the cycle of using symptomatic therapy for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, what we need to do is start to introduce therapies that produce uh, modification of the disease process that are neuroprotective or can induce neurorestoration. We get hope from the approaches which are being used to clear amyloid from the brain in Alzheimer's disease, to alter the production and phosphorylation of tau, to look at the production and clearance of alpha-synuclein. Uh, these are the mainstream candidates. But let me just raise a question. What if they just represent a general disruption of protein handling that occurs in the brain of an aging individual and the real cause of the neurodegenerative process that occurs in Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease continues to progress? after these proteins have been removed. We need to have alternative plans to treat what are clearly complex, progressive neurodegenerative diseases. And I would argue that you should try to question everything you see because there are no right answers in science and everything you find will be novel and new. And for those of you who are planning to go into experimental work, I would suggest that one of the things we most need to do is to devise experimental models of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease that truly reflect all of their features in terms of neuropathology, biochemistry, and symptomatology. And as new scientists and new doctors, we need new thinking. Avoid thinking about small picture. Don't get bogged down in things too molecular. What you should look at is the big picture of the individual patient with a neurodegenerative illness. And accept that these are diseases which are likely to be syndromic in nature. They probably have no single cause and there will be no single cure. I know what I think about Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. I believe these are complex difficult neurodegenerative diseases that affect an increasing number of people in our aging population. What we have become aware of is risk factors for the onset of these illnesses and also factors which can potentially modify your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease. We need you as a new generation of doctors and scientists to look at them with new eyes and new ideas and to move on from the classical views of the past.